What is happening people? Frank here from inside the garage. We've got this Nissan Murano we're gonna check out. It's got a service engine soon light on and it actually stalled just one time for the uh, client that came in through the garage. So I'm just gonna test drive real quick, see if we can get it to reproduce the symptom and get an overall idea about the drive and feel. And on the test drive, particularly what we're looking for is any hesitation or stalling. As I pull over here, this one's got about 119,000 miles. And yeah, you can also power brake the vehicle. And all that means is what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in drive, put your left foot on the brake, and then ease with your right foot. Just give it a little bit of gas, get it to about 1500 RPM, hold it, and see if you can get any hesitation in the engine. And I don't feel anything right now. So we're gonna take it back into the garage. We also have this uh, tire pressure monitoring system light on. We may look at that as well, see what that's all about. So let's get back in the garage. So one of the first things that you can do is just do a quick visual on the engine. Just check engine light, we're gonna dive in and just get a basic code pull. And as we do that, we use the Maxi Sys, the Altel. We've got several diagnostic scanners. And you guys tune in because I think Tuesdays what we'll do is we'll do a little tool review, it seems like that. That's uh, what everybody's doing is the tool reviews, so we'll get the tool reviews up. But what we've got is a basic starting point on a check engine light. We've got three faults, and they're all related to the camshaft position sensor. Now, the fact is, you don't want to just replace parts based upon what a code pull said. On this particular vehicle, the Nissans are notorious for engine oil level. So you want to make sure that you check the engine oil level. As we checked it on this Nissan, it was low, we topped it off, we actually cleared the check engine light, and the light came back on, so that's a hard hit. But if you're lucky enough, and you top off the engine oil, that may eliminate a cam sensor fall. It's really important to get that oil to the top end of the motor, and that's kind of where those camshaft sensors live. So the next step for us, as we verified the cam sensor, is to actually check the connectors and test the sensor on vehicle. So let's dive into that next step. So you need to make sure one of the first steps, and in a lot of occasions, it is this, this very first step after you've checked the engine oil level, is to make sure that there's no oil contamination on the actual connectors. So as you can see, disconnecting this camshaft sensor connector, it's got a little bit of moisture, but it's not extreme. You know, we don't have a major oil leak. What can be common is these valve cover gaskets on this 3.5 motor can leak. And if it's leaking engine oil onto the sensor connector, you're gonna lose a signal and that'll cause the cam sensor circuit fault. So make sure that you check the connectors, make sure that they're not oily. Well, the next step for us is to actually hook up a lab scope so we can look at the voltage specifications. On these cam sensors, we should be one to four volts. So let's go ahead and start the engine. And as you can see, we've got the rear bank cam sensor. If we're watching voltage spikes, we should be in the range of one to four. And as you can see here, we're actually spiking beyond 10 volts. It seems to be in the eight to 10 volt range. That sensor is bad. Now for good measure, we went ahead and tested the front bank sensor, which technically is supposed to be good. It's not triggering a fault code. And that is within specification. However, because of the mileage on these Nissan Muranos, you really want to replace those in pairs as well as the crankshaft sensor. You know, the crankshaft sensor and the camshaft sensors all work together, sort of the eyes and ears for fuel injection pulse and ignition. So it's really important. We don't want the client to come back with the same type of symptoms and now we've got a crankshaft sensor or that additional, at that time, good cam sensor we're having to replace that. So we're gonna replace all three. And the other note I'd like to say from our experience here in the garage, you know, if one is selling their vehicle, we'll go ahead in the aftermarket and get an inexpensive cam sensor. But if someone is keeping their vehicle, you really want to stick to Nissan original equipment cam and crank sensors. There's a higher failure rate with the aftermarket sensors. So let's get this replaced. We'll dive into the repair and show you some of the basic tips of replacing those cam sensors.
So there you have it, cam sensors on a Nissan Murano. Make sure to change out that crank sensor. Even if it's working at the time, if it's aged, replace them all out as a trio. Cam sensors and crank sensors, very important. So stick around, we've got more of these YouTube videos and you know I'm gonna to try to load up Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I'll get you from what's happening inside our garage. And you know, if you like the video, click that like button. Also subscribe to stay tuned for more videos to come up. And you know, if you've got a question about a vehicle repair that you'd like to see, it's really easy. Get down in the comments and we'll make it happen the best we can. So thanks for hanging. I'm Frank with Inside the Garage.